What is going on guys? Welcome back to a new video. I apologize for my way I look. I just actually got off of work and I wanted to make this video as soon as possible because I just really want to talk about this. So you may have heard that Sony just dropped its newest vlogging camera. That is the Sony ZV-2. Now the camera that I'm currently shooting on is the ZV-1. So I'm going to talk about some of the new features that the ZV-2 has over the ZV-1 and then I'm going to talk about why I will not be buying the ZV-2 and keeping my ZV-1. So I've had the ZV-1 for about three years and it's an amazing, it's an amazing camera. If you're a solo content creator and you want a small compact camera that gives you 4K capabilities with a flip out screen, then I would recommend the Sony ZV-1. Now the Sony ZV-2, where it improves on the Sony ZV-1 is the wider field of view. So on the ZV-1, it is a 24 to 70 millimeter wide lens, whereas on the ZV-2, it is an 18 to 50 millimeter. So you're getting a much wider background. So I'm holding this out at full arm length. You get a much wider field of view with the ZV-2. So that is a much improved, uh, and a lot of people were really talking about, especially when it comes to the one that's sensor on the camera when you're shooting in 4K, it does tend to crop in. So it crops in more on the 24 millimeter as opposed to an 18, the cropping isn't as bad. So the next best thing that they've, the next thing that they've improved on this is the color accuracy. You can now shoot on the Sony ZV-2 in S-Log3, which means that you can get the full color edited and it looks amazing. Whereas on the ZV-1, uh, you can only shoot at S-Log2. Now, that's, this really depends on how well you are good at color grading. So if you've never color graded before, then whether it's S-Log2 or S-Log3, generally to someone who's just starting doing YouTube, you'll probably never notice a difference. But for those who are familiar with color grading, then this is going to be a much improved feature over the Sony ZV-1. The next thing that improves on the Sony ZV-2 over the ZV-1 is the menu system. You get full touch, you get the same menu system as you would get in the Sony FX30 and the Sony ZV-E1. So if you've ever seen the videos for those, that is the menu system that you will get on the Sony ZV-2. The ZV-1 is still using the same um, menu system that you would find in pretty much most of the Sony A lineup. So basically the A66, 65, 6400 and all of the ZV lineups excluding the ZV-1E, and I'm not sure if the Sony ZV-E10 has the newer menu system, they may or may not, I don't remember off the top of my head, but you do get the, men, you get the better menu system, as well as you also get touch features on the screen where it's on the ZV-1, you do not get that. You also get uh, USB-C for charging as opposed to USB, or I believe it's micro USB, so that's also cool because you get universal coverage in terms of charging, uh, right then and there and you also get when it comes to mounting this on a uh, handle or like a Bluetooth handle or on any type of tripod the quarter screw is actually a little bit over to the I believe it's the left or the right but it does allow you to it's not directly in the center so when you want to change out your battery or change out the SD card all you have to do is just simply just flip open the battery case pull it out put in a new battery and you're good to go as opposed to with the CV1 if you wanted to do that you kind of would have to take it off of the mount take it off, put the battery on, screw it back on the mount, put the mount back on the tripod, and then you're good to go. So that is a much improved feature that they much needed on the ZV-2. Now, all of these features on this camera for the ZV-2 put this camera at $900. And that is the reason why I am not buying the ZV-2 is price-wise, that is a lot of money. So when I bought the ZV-1 when it first came out, it was starting at 650 and it came with a kit which was called the Vloggers Kit which included the Bluetooth, um, Bluetooth grip that I'm using right now. That was around 650 bucks for all of that. Now the camera is around 750 bucks for just the camera itself. So if you're looking at just the camera alone, that's another $150 more over, uh, $150 more for the ZV-2. In that price range, you can literally buy the Sony ZV-E10, you can buy the A6600, not the A6600, but you can get the A6400, the 65, uh, even the Sony ZV-1F, which no one ever talks about, but you have choices when it comes to buying a compact camera. Again, um, in terms of compact, you've got the ZV-1, you've got the ZV, uh, ZV-2, or I'm sorry, the ZV-2, Mark II, sorry. And then you have the Sony ZV-1F. But at $900, again, you can buy the Sony ZV-E10 with a kit lens, a 16 to 50 millimeter, for around $800. And that saves you another $100 that you can use to buy another lens. 
I do think that there is a lot of money for a content creator dub camera that I think that they probably could have made just slightly less expensive and I do understand the fact that it does give you a lot of cool features. One of them also being that it has a better mic system on it than you get on the ZV-1. It's got a new AI, I guess it's called an AI microphone which basically no matter how you do your videos, whether you're shooting it from the front, the microphone the audio comes from the front. If you're doing narrating videos, then it automatically switches to the back. And you can do, it does all of this via its new AI processor, as opposed to with the Sony ZV-1, you don't really get that. So I can understand with all of those new features and all, it makes it a very tempting camera, but at $900, that is a lot to be asking for a small compact camera when you can find other cameras out there that will work just as well. So that's the reason why I'm not switching from my Sony ZV-1 to the ZV-2. It's just, I can't justify spending, you know, $900 for that camera when I can buy the Sony ZV-E10 with an interchangeable lens and still do the same thing. Yes, I may not be able to get the new uh, high dynamic, uh, I may not be able to shoot an S-Log3 or may, I don't know. I may not get that new dynamic uh, stabilization or active stabilization on the ZV on the ZV Mark II, and the ZV10 doesn't have that. I mean, I get the new AI cool, you know, microphone on the uh, ZV E10 that the ZV Mark II has, but that's okay because I shoot all of my videos with wireless mics because I just prefer that. So for me, I don't really see myself spending that kind of money for a camera. It's basically just a better version of this, but not by much. That's a lot of money to be asking. So that is my thoughts on the camera. Again, who is the camera for? Well, that depends on the person and what they need it for. If you don't really care, you're just tired of your ZV-1, you just want the better version because you want the better version, well, then you're going to buy it no matter what. But if you're looking to kind of get a good point-and-shoot camera that gives you everything that you need without spending almost $1,000, then I highly would recommend either the Sony ZV-E10, the ZV-1, or even, again, the ZV-1F. It is a little bit less expensive. It's about $500. It still gives you the 4K capabilities, just like all the other ZV lineups, but at a significantly less expensive price. So what do you guys think about the Sony ZV Mark II? Are you planning on buying one? Do you have one? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, do you like another Sony camera? What do you want to get besides the Sony ZV-1 II? Let me know down below. And my name is Black Appeal, the Apple Guy. And I will see you guys in the next video. Enjoy your weekend.